Okay, Mr. LaBeouf. Um, <clears throat> for the uh, city manager, Mr. Mayor, um, we were uh, told that Mr. Moot had until September 15th um, to return, you know, paperwork in regard to a plan. Uh, did he <coughs> in fact turn in something from a civil engineer? His engineer um, turned in something to code enforcement. Um, they received it. Um, they were not sure if it had been provided to Mr. Moot's attorney or to Mr. Moot, but code enforcement did get that. Uh, they're in the process of reviewing it. Meet with the city engineer to review what the report says, and then sit down with the engineer to discuss how they implement what the report recommends. Okay, so it has been turned in, but yes, it has no review yeah. really we, at this point. Yeah, it, we just got it today. Okay, um, and then. Um, in addition to that, um, a couple of the residents over there told me that they received correspondence from Mr. Burroughs in regard to if they felt that he was occupying the property uh, to notify, you know, someone. And um, uh, I know a couple of the residents said that they weren't going to be able to be here this evening, but uh, they asked me to communicate that they believe, uh, without a doubt, that he was at least staying overnight Saturday evening. And their question is, and my question as well, is um, if we do know that he is staying on the property or in the premises, what, uh, you, know, you know, what do we have that we can avail ourselves to, and, and what is the process at that point? I mean, Rick well, did Mr. Burroughs ask them to contact him? I, I'm not sure what it specifically well, stated. He, I'm not either. Um, he, he's been we've condemned the property for occupancy right but I guess in just general terms if a property is condemned for occupancy and someone is found occupying the property well, what all we be? have right now is an administrative order that prohibits him from occupying it we'd have to convert that into a judicial order if, if we believed he was violating the administrative order and from that point if we got a judicial order and he violated it he would be in contempt of court or could be held in contempt of court Okay. Do they need to provide some kind of, you know, affidavit that they... I, I think that's why Mr. Burroughs wrote them, sir, to obtain information that he asked for, and, and they should, if he asked them to contact him, then they certainly should. I, I don't, I'm, I, again, I'm not positive that they asked, he asked them to contact him directly. Well, he might have, might have said have been contact co code enforcement. enforcement or could have been codes enforcement. I, I'm not aware of the letter. Um, the they process should. that was used in the past was the um, property owners would notify code enforcement when code enforcement, you know, felt we had enough to take action, he would ask the attorney to step in. Um, if we have people that believe Mr. Mood is um, occupying that residence again, then they need to contact us and let us know. Well, and, and again, we, we need to understand what they know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and what they're witnessing is that he's bringing trash into the residence. Uh, the truck that's in the driveway is filling up with trash. So this scenario, um, you know, is starting to replicate itself again. A and uh, they did receive the letter from Mr. Burroughs, but they're just not sure, um, you know, whether there's going to be follow through um, in regard to, you know, how this is going to be handled. The only way they're going to find out is by calling. They have to make sure they they contact the codes right. enforcement so that proper follow up can be done. I mean, now was this letter sent? Uh, we don't. Maybe we can get a copy of it. I don't, was it sent to everyone on the street or? Mr. Mayor, I don't know. Okay, maybe we should get a copy of the letter. Okay. I, I I agree with the concerns on Mr. Moot, but uh, you know the issue of. Uh, of driving came up again when he was cited again and then he went and reclaimed his vehicle and the police have said that he brought a person from Adult Protective Services with him to reclaim it so that person could ride with him and be the because he only holds a learner's permit and uh, so we got a you know, he has been cited twice now for uh, unlicensed operation um, the vehicle that was in his driveway. We got the truck, which is licensed. The uh, car, which is 
uninspected but still registered. That's correct right now. We're told as long as there's a blue tarp over it that it's okay to have that there. Um, you know, most people would back off. He is relentless in his desire to thumb his nose at, at society's constructs. And uh, we have communicated our concerns to the people who will be prosecuting the V&T violations? Okay. Um, is there any other evidence that he's attempted to drive that anyone's been aware of since that Saturday night incident? And my understanding is when he pulled out of the plaza, he was pulled over by the police and literally left his vehicle in the middle of the road. And then it was towed. Um, I, uh, you know, it's <clears throat> behavior at best. I am aware that he has registered another vehicle, and I made Mrs. Corvo aware of it. Um, no one knows at this point what kind of vehicle it is. Uh, the belief is it's a, you know, brand new vehicle or a vehicle totally different than what uh, he had owned in the past. And um, it's not a new Kia. I know that. But <laughs> it's, uh, Sorry about that. Yeah, well, me too. <laughs> But uh, y the issue is uh, the neighborhood, you know, there's been a lot of near misses just in his driveway. Uh, and uh, now that school is back in session, uh, a lot of traffic, foot traffic in that area. And it's a danger to himself and to others. But if I could just go back to that question um, in regard to what, if, 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 if the process is the neighbors need to contact code enforcement if they believe he's staying in the property or uh, in, in the house, um, is it they have to contact codes while they believe he's there? Or, or what kind of proof do they need to have and, and how many times? I guess that's their, and I can understand the, you know, the questions. Is it, it's 11 o'clock at night and he's there, we call now? Who do we call? Uh, or do we call the next day and he's gone in the morning? What proof do we have? Well, first again, I don't know what Mr. Burrow's letter said. If the goal would be to obtain a court order to enforce the administrative order, do we need to know that at 11 o'clock at night? No. If we knew it at 11 o'clock at night, could he go in and be arrested for violating an administrative order? No. So I presume, without knowing, that the letter said, if you are aware, you know, we've been made aware as city's attorneys that there are some claims that he may be residing in the home, and if you know of that, please contact code enforcement. I'm pretty sure that's what the letter said. Um, and so they need to do that. And after Mr. McQueen speaks w with those neighbors, he'll come to us and tell us what they've said, and if we think, in our legal opinion, it rises to the level of something that constitutes occupancy such that we should obtain a court order, then we will do so. Um, it's not going to happen overnight. Mm -hmm. There's, uh, he's entitled to due process on that claim. Okay. And uh, Well, in your opinion, what is you know due process in terms of how many times do they have to believe? Well, due report? process is notifying Mr. Moot that he's being brought into court to seek an order in joining him from occupying the home that would be subject to punishment as contempt of court if he violates it. That's the due process. And the return dates on that are going to be established by the court um, to ensure that he has his day in court, including his day to come in and say, I didn't do it. So what's the level? The level that a judge believes more likely than not that he occupied the home versus not occupied the home. One statement by one person saying he did versus him saying he didn't, I say we don't need it. But if you've got five property owners that say he went in the house, he never came out, we saw the light on at, you know, 2 o'clock in the morning. But, but in that scenario, the, the neighbors literally have to do a stakeout. <coughs> that, you know, they have to have a combined effort stakeout uh, of this man. Um, but, you know, again, what? Well, it's time and time again he is uh, just, um, you know, in the face of these regulations. He has no desire to um, comply. And 
I we don't. Just, we already heard tonight that he's hired an engineer who's gone in to look at the claims of the city engineer as, to, as far as an unsafe building. He complied within the timeline. 